Good afternoon and welcome to the Wavy Digital Desk. I'm your host, Sarah Gu. Today is the first day of spring. Now you may not believe that with the 40 degree temperatures here in Hampton Roads, but it's time to clean up our parks, clean up our beaches, clean up our neighborhoods and get ready to be outside. Now Keep Norfolk Beautiful is making that effort known with joining forces with the Great American Cleanup. Now Norfolk has activities for the next three months in this citywide effort to keep our neighborhoods Neighborhoods clean. We have program manager Sarah Sturzing here with us today to talk a little bit more about what you can expect, how to get involved, and what it is. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Absolutely. Yeah, so I know. Today's I know. the we kickoff. Were, we were just here for, it feels like we were just here for the International Coastal Cleanup, but I know that that has been a little while now, so it's important to now, I guess, about six months later to think about going into spring. I know we didn't have snow, so, you know, things were still on the ground, but with all those leaves that have fallen now with pollen in the way, it's good to clean up those parks and while everyone's outside. Absolutely. Yeah, we want everybody um, to feel excited um, and spring into spring with us and join the Great American Cleanup. It kicks off regionally this Friday. So yes, it's in Norfolk, but it's in all the cities around Hampton Roads um, and up on the peninsula and throughout the entire state. And we're kicking off in Norfolk at Lafayette Park at 10 a.m. Friday morning. So uh, we've got a lot happening here. And are you happy with people just walking up and joining in? Do they need Absolutely. to sign up? Absolutely. We would prefer people to register with us um, because the weather is looking a little iffy. Um, it's very important that we have people's email and a phone number just in case, um, but it helps us control numbers and have jobs for everybody. We don't want people showing up and not having anything to do. Um, and they can do that um, by either emailing knb at norfolk.gov, or they can go to our webpage at www.norfolk.gov forward slash knb. Perfect. And I have that all linked in the Wavy web article as well. So people can go there and see the times and dates um, of everything and the addresses as well. Um, Sarah, do you mind just starting off by two talking about what is Keep um, Norfolk Beautiful? It's something that you all run year round, but just so people know there is a organized and coordinated effort really into cleaning the streets here. Absolutely. Yeah. So we are actually a division of waste management in the Department of Public Works here with the city of Norfolk. Um, a lot of Keep America Beautiful affiliates are their own standalone nonprofits, but we are attached to the city. And so what we do is we organize volunteers to go out and clean litter. Um, we do outreach and education on how to um, get rid of your solid waste properly. Um, we partner with um, multiple organizations around the city to keep the waterways clean, keep the streets clean, keep our neighborhoods and parks and open spaces clean because nobody wants to live in a, in a littered environment. Um, we want people coming here and enjoying all the beautiful amenities that we have in Norfolk and not having to see the litter. Um, so we are encouraging people to join the effort, not just for the Great American Cleanup, but all year long, like you said, we do pop-up community cleanups. Um, we have adopt -a spots We've got a program called the Green Bucket Brigade that is really targeted at organizations and businesses, civic leagues and fraternal organizations who um, want to have litter kits so that they can clean litter all year long. And um, there's, we have multiple opportunities. We do a lot of outreach. We will come do workshops and, and partner with you. Um, all in an effort to keep our city clean, green, and beautiful. And I know this is important across the country, but our close connection to waterways and the beaches and, and for all of that, how important or what level does that add on to the necessity really for cleaning up the neighborhood? Oh, it's it's integral. Um, we are, you're, you're no further than, you know, a quarter of a mile from open water in our city. And that is because our storm drains drain straight into our waterways and into our stormwater system. So if all that litter and trash you see on the street doesn't clog up the storm system and increase flooding, it will end up actually in the rivers, in the tributaries, in the Chesapeake Bay, and into the wider Atlantic beyond. And um, plastic is choking the country. We need folks to, you know, um, hopefully not purchase as much um, single-use items um, at the beginning, but 
you know, when we do see litter, we've got to pick it up because that is where it's going to end up. And um, people do not want to pay more taxes to have uh, infrastructure redone because it's clogged with plastic. We want to make sure we're taking care of it when we see it, putting plastic in any trash in our bags and we're bagging it and we're um, sealing up those bags and putting it in a trash can. And I just wanted to say for anyone joining us now, these are some photos that you all shared with us from Keat Norfolk Beautiful from the city of Norfolk in terms of past cleanups. I also put some questions, at least if you're on the Facebook chat or YouTube, asking, are you getting involved wherever you live in your area cleaning up litter and also maybe in the Great American cleanup in the next three months? Um, but Sarah, you know, this is an interesting program because you have events that you all are planning, but you also are opening it up to the public and saying, hey, if you want to plan your own event, you know, get out there. Can you talk a little bit about sort of how you would like the next three months to go with those kinds of groups? Well, we would like them to be autonomous. We want everybody to get involved and we have litter supplies that are free and we will give them to you to clean up where you live, work and play. Um, yeah, it, it's integral that this isn't somebody else's job. It's all our job. And so for the next three months, our hope is that people are getting inspired to keep doing this, you know, that they're going to start, but that they're going to um, make this a part of their life, that they understand that litter doesn't go away. Um, we live in a very disposable world now, which, you know, people like me would like to see stop. But until that happens, um, we're going to have all those dollar stores and, and um, places where you can buy, um, you know, single use plastic items that are just going to break and end up, you know, not having a use. And we need to make sure we're disposing of all those things properly. You know, it's, it's time for us to start thinking more about um, refusal is what we like to say here is Refuse it at the beginning. When you're in the grocery store and you're buying a cucumber, don't buy the cucumber that's shrink wrapped in plastic. Buy the other one. Um, you know, we want people to really be mindful. And, and so as along with the litter cleanups over the next three months, a big part of this is education and understanding about our personal impact, our household impact, our impact when we travel, our impact where we work. Um, it's all a part of, of what's happening with the greater world beyond. Um, there's a lot of plastic and a lot of things that we can substitute with reusables. Water bottles, you know, that you can refill. Reusable grocery bags that you don't get those plastic bags every time that you go to the grocery store. If you do get those plastic bags, finding another use for them after you've used them um, to bring your groceries home. You know, some of us use it for pet waste. There's lots of other options out there. And we just want to be sure that people are being mindful um, because it's important. Um, you know, climate change is real and, and plastic impacts that greatly. And all trash does, truthfully. We need to know how to recycle right and we need to know how to dispose of our waste properly. And I want to talk about another event you'll have coming up later this month in a minute. But first, I wanted to say um, on Saturday and Sunday, you are, you are also having Keep Norfolk Beautiful Days that are block right. by block. Can you talk about what that is? Yeah, so that's just a, a sort of call to action in the community. Get out and you can clean at your own curb. You can clean in your neighborhood, at your faith community, at your organization. Get yourself or a group of people together and you can reach out to us again at Keep Norfolk Beautiful. We have free litter cleanup supplies that we can provide you with. And our hope is that we'll see people all over Norfolk all weekend long cleaning up where they live, work and play and ensuring that we're getting out in front of the litter. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing problem. And like you said earlier, we don't want it to end up in the waterways. We don't want it to end in the trees. When people are going out to the parks and our public spaces, you know, being mindful that, you know, there are other people there that are going to use those spaces, but there's also wildlife. Um, Keep Norfolk Beautiful is located in Lafayette Park, where we're going to be hosting the event on Friday, but we sit right in front of the zoo. And so when all of that loose trash and plastic goes blowing through the air and up into the trees, it could actually end up in one of the pens next door at the zoo. And we don't want to hurt our our, uh, our wildlife friends that are next door and or the ones that live in the park. 
And last time we were speaking, the International Coastal Cleanup, that provided you all data and it provides you information to sort of move through. And last time we were speaking about, you brought up the wind, having, you know, covers for the trash cans and not yeah. just throwing something in a trash bin on a windy day, making sure right. that it lands in there, it's safe. How important right. is that piece of it, disposing Huge. properly? Huge. Pack out what you pack in. You don't always have to use a public bin. We ask people to think about it when they're when they're at the beach or when they're going for a picnic or they're even in their car. Make sure you always have trash bags with you. Um, we are, like I said, we're, we're creating trash and litter all the time, all day long. And if you have, you know, that one little tool, that one little bag with you in your beach bag when you go to the beach, you can pack up whatever trash you make from your picnic or your your um, your day out and you can, you know, tie it up and use one of the public bins or you can just be a really great, helpful citizen and take it home and put it in your own trash can. Um, you know, we had the big parade this weekend and we handed out bags all weekend and it was such a wonderful thing on Sunday morning um, to see that our white trash bags were tied up and sitting next to trash bins along Granby Street and Ocean View. And it really did have a huge impact on the amount of resources that had to get deployed to clean that up after the parade. Um, you know, we want to see our public funds go to um, good things, not having to spend it on litter. Um, that is a, a preventable issue. And so it's it's just really being mindful, thinking about it. When you see an overflowing trash can at your local, I don't know, pharmacy, let them know inside. They might not know that the trash can needs to be emptied. And if it's not getting emptied and the wind is blowing it, it's just creating more and more litter. Um, when we're at a public place like a park or at the beaches and you see a trash can overflowing, all the cities have public service numbers that you can call and um, let them know, you know, somebody needs to come out and empty the trash can at, at X, Y, and Z park or X, Y, and Z beach. Um, so that's really, really important. And you also talk about, you know, having materials to clean up and you all providing the supplies how important is it for people to stay safe while they're picking up litter, while they're picking up trash or combing through things? Absolutely. We provide gloves and we have litter grabbers that are the sticks with the little grabbers on the end. Um, and you really do have to be mindful. You know, um, the pandemic has caused a lot of people to be using disposables. I know it's a few years out, but we're still seeing the impacts of a lot of those things. And, you know, um, there can be dangerous items mixed in with some of the litter. And so you always want to be aware of um, what you're picking up. Also, what you're wearing on your feet. Um, you know, when people come out to our litter cleanups, we tell them you have to wear closed-toed shoes. We prefer you wearing something with a thick sole on it. Um, wearing flip-flops and Crocs to clean up litter is not really a good idea. Um, we want to make sure that everybody's safe and um, that, you know, you're handling waste because it is waste properly. And um, we give you all the tools that you need to do that. And there's another event coming up I wanted to ask you about too, Poplar Hall Mulching. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, Sarah, I, I will tell you that one is actually getting canceled. Um, I apologize um, for the late notice on that. We are um, not going to focus on that one this this week. We're going to just be sticking at lock. Not at all. I mean, I understand with the weather and being out in the elements too, you sort of have to adjust with, you know, what's happening and what's most important. We did. We did. Yeah, we we're hoping um, we're going to be doing litter cleanups. We're going to have mulching here at Lafayette Park. Um, if the um, rain stays away on Friday, we're going to have a group of folks going out actually on the Lafayette River with one of our event sponsors, which is called Electrified Marina here in Norfolk. Um, Hot 91 from Norfolk State is going to be out with a group of students. And then we've got a huge group of military and a lot of individuals and families that are going to be joining us at the kickoff on Friday. And then again, we've got multiple cleanups in neighborhoods across the city on, fr on Saturday and Sunday. Um, so we're 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 hoping to have a critical mass of people um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, really showing um, off Norfolk. And again, it's across the entire region. 
Um, you know, folks can also go to Ask HR Green to see where there's cleanups throughout the entire region on Southside and the peninsula as well this weekend. So this is a huge coordinated effort. I mean, just you listing all them out. And then, you know, again with the river, that even though it starts in Norfolk, that is going to impact obviously the other cities around. So that is so critical. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, um, we're in March. Next month is Earth Month. Um, we will have an event on April the 6th um, that is a special waste collection event. Um, but with that, you know, people need to think about how they're throwing things away in their green bin and their blue bin. And um, all of our cities are, are sticking to a message that we want you to focus on five things in your recycling bin, which is your glass, your metal, your paper, um, plastic um, jugs and bottles that have a, a, a handle on it only. All of those items need to be clean and dry before they go in your blue bin and they do not get bagged. The only thing that gets bagged is trash and that goes in your green bin. Um, so we really are very focused on those two messages, making sure that you're bagging your trash and making sure that you're not bagging your recycling and that you're recycling correctly um, because there's only a handful of things that are taken and that's across the whole region. We, we all use the same um, facility that, that separates out our recycling and we want to ensure that we're doing it properly and um, we're not putting trash in our blue bins. We're not putting landscaping items in our blue bins. You would be um, surprised at the folks who um, think their blue bin is an extra trash can and not a recycling bin. So we absolutely don't want to do that. We want to ensure that um, people are getting rid of their stuff correctly. And for your special, you know, recycling event, you also highlight, you know, bringing your old electronic items, you know, yeah. bringing items that can't actually go in the bin. Are there certain things that are household items that, you know, people should keep an eye on in terms of hold holding them or storing them until these proper sort of recycling events? Um, absolutely. And I will tell you, SIPSA, um, the, the local landfill and the transfer stations, they, re, they accept all of these items all year long. Um, we are going to be um, accepting electronics at our special waste collection April 6th. Um, secured shredding, we're going to have on-site shredding. And then the things that you should not be just throwing in your green bin, batteries, light bulbs, electronics, any chemicals, anything that you use in your yard or inside your house, um, things like, you know, feed and seed for your lawn and fertilizers and any um, chemicals like old gasoline or oil, um, things like that need to go to SIPSA and or come to our special waste collection event. Um, those are held again across the region. Um, we happen to have ours on April 6th, which is going to take place in um, Norfolk um, at the Azalea Baptist Church in partnership with the Camellia Shore Civic League. Um, that is an event that we will welcome you to come and we're also going to be doing tree adoptions that day with native trees. But you absolutely should never put those items in your blue, I mean, in your green bin or your blue bin, of course. And that's everything. I mean, it's it's items all the way to nail polish. I mean, those kinds of things, you don't want that going into a landfill. You don't want that going in the ground because that is, is going to taint the soil and put in toxins. And we're trying to clean up the environment. We're not trying to add to the problem. So if you can properly dispose of it, that will help enormously. Those are some great tips. I know that those are things that are frequent, you know, in terms of what people just throw in the bathroom trash can or throw in the trash can at home, including, I'm sure, you know, empty chemical bottles and all of that sorts of stuff. Um, I did want to ask, you know, in terms of events for this weekend and weather, what's the best way to stay updated? Do you all have, is it through your social media channels? Yeah, so they can look at Keep Norfolk Beautiful on um, Facebook and Instagram, and then also our webpage again, which is www.norfolk.gov forward slash KNB. They can call us or email us directly and say, hey, I was planning to come out. What's the status? We are not going to probably pull the plug 100%. Um, we still have plenty to do that we can do inside. We're going to be doing trash can painting. 
We're going to have people helping us pull supplies together for ongoing cleanups. Um, so we've got, we do have jobs that will um, be fine for people if it does happen to rain, but we're, we're not going to let it rain. We're going to, we're going to do our dance and, and uh, ensure that we have a beautiful sunny day on Friday. Absolutely. And, you know, I know this was a call to action. You gave some great tips throughout this conversation just for people in their everyday lives to keep in mind. But Sarah, is there anything else, you know, before before we sign off that you wanted to share with people in terms of either this weekend or maybe helpful tips just for them to carry on? Just, you know, please know that there are resources. Um, every single city has some sort of a clean commission, clean city commission, or a Keep America Beautiful affiliate or a local nonprofit that focuses on ensuring that the environment is clean. We've got partners with all the universities and Tidewater Community College. All of them are across this whole region. And if you can't identify some place that you, um, if you have an, wanna find out how to dispose of something properly or get engaged, feel free to call on Keep Norfolk Beautiful. We will direct you to one of our sister organizations across the region, but please um, get engaged, get involved. Um, we all have a part to play in keeping our community beautiful and um, encouraging folks to come and visit our region. We have so many assets and it's such a beautiful place to visit. We want people to always think of Hampton Roads and Norfolk in particular as a beautiful gem um, that's properly taken care of and that we're proud to invite them to. Absolutely. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us again here at the Digital Desk. And to anyone watching, it's linked in Facebook, Weeby.com, and on YouTube, where you can go to sign up, to register, to find out more, as well as the contact information that Sarah shared today as well. So thank you all so much for watching today. And Sarah, thank you again for joining us. Thanks so much to you too, Sarah. Have a great one. We'll you see too. you out on Friday. Right, exactly.